is the rise of the SUV as inescapable as gravity. Well, the Ford Puma started off as a tiny coupe and now it lets you see over hedgerows thanks to its taller stance and its higher seated position. SUVs are now the big selling blockbusters that most motoring execs pray for at night. The thing that could potentially save most manufacturers if their other cars aren't selling as well. So far as small SUVs go, Ford had been on the back foot searching for its smash hit. The EcoSport, which was their first attempt, failed to win any awards or sell nearly as many as the Nissan Juke or the Renault Captur. It was boxy, it didn't drive very well to say the least. So, is the new Ford Puma the crossover that Ford should have launched this whole time? And compared to the boxy EcoSport, this is more distinctive and the looks evoke strong opinions. Now, before we dig deep into what we think makes the Puma so special, let's not forget the challenges it faces. There's now a small SUV for every taste. The Puma's going to have to be seriously capable to compete. We have a lot to talk about. But before that, like and subscribe and click the bell button, then you get notifications for every time a new live video goes up on Car Buyer. The Puma is unmistakable when you see it on the road, thanks to its large grill and perched headlights, which can look a bit froggy in photos, but seems to work well in the real world. Large wheel arches and 17 and 18 inch alloy wheels give it a stocky planted stance and despite being fairly tall, the Puma has a coupe style roof line that's the opposite to the EcoSport. It's a sporty take on the small SUV formula that's keen to give the impression that it will handle just as well as a hatchback, but it's slightly less functional as a result. There aren't any built in roof rails for instance. And the ST line and Vignali trims get painted wheel arches that are more likely to pick up scratches and stone chips rather than a black plastic. Now the Ford Fiesta is one of our favourite cars here at Car Buyer, and the interior has pretty much been reused in here. That nice minimalistic look, the horizontal wide dashboard, which makes the driver's seat feel really spacious here in the front. The controls are very easy to understand and it's all very lovely inside, but I think as the Puma is one of the more stylish and more fun designs from Ford, I want a little bit more colour. I want the funky exterior to be in the interior. It's just a bit dark and dull in here. SUV buyers love gadgets, so Ford launched the Puma without any basic trim levels to start with. Instead, there are titanium ST-Line and ST-Line X trims, which have now been joined by this car, the range-topping ST-Line X Vignali. So, for now, every car gets the 8-inch infotainment screen, a heated windscreen that gets you on the road more quickly on cold mornings, rear parking sensors and wireless phone charging. Ford ST-Line trims are similar to the FR and R-Line trims of rivals, giving the Puma a sporty look and a stiffer suspension. It also gets this crisp digital instrument panel, hugging seats, leather trim for the gear lever and steering wheel, and dark headlining. ST-Line X sees leather extend onto the seats and adds climate control and a B&O sound system. Vignali signifies that this is the most luxurious Puma with opulent features like a heated steering wheel and unique grille and chrome trim. Of course, it also pumps up the price, which wouldn't make it our recommendation. Instead, we would pick the titanium or the ST line for the best value for money. So while it might be based on the Fiesta, the Puma is much taller, it's much wider, so it's a better choice for a family car as it's got a lot more room, but it's not the best in its class. So the rear bench doesn't slide backwards and forwards like it does in the Renault Captur and it doesn't feel as roomy as the Skoda Kamiq. Buyers I think will be most impressed with the boot because it's actually bigger than the Ford Focus and it opens upwards compared to the old EcoSport that had the weird side hinge thing going on. Now storage space you've got 456 litres and unlike some rivals it's only a tiny little lip, so lifting heavy luggage is much easier just to slide straight in. Underneath the boot floor, you have another 80 litres of boot space that's hidden out of sight. 
so you can easily keep your valuables and stuff if you go on holiday in there. Also, it seems like Ford has taken a leaf out of Skoda's book because they've thought about the tiny little details that make life that little bit easier. You've got the removable lining that you can just hose down if the dog has jumped in a local river. And you've got a flexible parcel shelf if you buy those weird tall items. And in the top versions, you have a powered boot. So if you've got your hands full, then you can just open the boot with a foot gesture. So they've designed the Puma, obviously, to look very sporty. So when you're driving it, does it feel the same or does it feel a little bit dull? I think most Ford fans know that it has a reputation for turning everyday cars into something a little bit more fun. You know what, I think they've done that here. Because Ford has gone straight to being one of the best in its class to drive. It feels agile, well balanced, and it is way more fun to drive than the Renault Captur and the Peugeot 2008. But it's not perfect. If you go for the ST Line X trim, then you get the bigger 18 inch wheels and the stiffer suspension. So it feels like a firmer ride and the road sounds a bit noisier when you put your foot down. Wow. It's a shame because the three cylinder, one litre EcoBoost petrol engines are so quiet that you only really hear them when you put your foot down and you rev really hard. And otherwise it just makes it a really calm, smooth ride. Which as a former Puma owner, I want it to be a little bit more fun like it was before. I loved my old Puma. I named him Percy. Two versions of the one litre petrol are available with 124 and 153 brake horsepower. That take 9.8 and 8.9 seconds a piece to do 0 to 62 mile an hour. As standard, the Puma comes fixed with a six-speed manual gearbox, but there's also the option of the seven-speed automatic in this car. It's okay and could appeal to drivers who spend their life negotiating city streets, but the manual is less expensive and more fun. Both versions of the engine are available with a mild hybrid technology, which harvests energy as the car slows down and stores it in a small battery. This can then be used to power the car's electronics and even give the engine a small boost as you accelerate, helping to save fuel in the process. That's not this clever engine's only trick, because it can also shut down one of the cylinders when you don't need full power. The lower powered engine can manage economy of up to 51.4 miles per gallon, while the top version is only slightly less economical, managing up to 48.7 miles per gallon. These figures are slightly better than the Duke can manage, but not far off the diesel rivals. Speaking of which, a diesel is likely to join the range later in the year, followed by a high-performance Puma ST, an entry-level petrol with less power. It's deal makers and deal breakers time. Ford has worked its magic once again, and the Puma is the most fun small SUV to drive thanks to its sharp handling. The one litre petrol isn't far off a diesel for low running costs, especially with the mild hybrid technology it's fitted. It might be quirky, but we think the Puma's striking design gives a lot of driveway appeal. So the back seats aren't tiny, but some rivals offer more space and flexible seating as well as a lighter area feel. Now at the moment, only the one litre petrol engine is available, but a diesel could be on the way and a hot ST performance model has already been confirmed. It may be well equipped, but the Puma is several thousand pounds more expensive than a number of rivals. And a new entry level model will hopefully address this in the coming months. When we first heard that Ford were launching the Puma SUV, we hoped it would right the wrongs of the EcoSport and give Ford the small SUV it so badly needed. And thankfully, I think it's done the job. And judging by the wait list to get one, you seem to think the same. Now, Puma enthusiasts like myself were a bit upset when we heard that they were reusing the Puma name for a crossover. But thankfully, it does share the nice, youthful spirit of its predecessor. It's great fun to drive. It's full of kit. I would consider the Puma to be a successful, if controversial, sequel to the 1990s original. If you found this video useful, then why not watch our Nissan Duke review or our SUVs playlist? And thank you for watching.